Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 144. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Magic Trick 133 to 145. Hey, 144 here. We have an amazing trick. We're going to solve the same problem that we did over here in a 143, but here we use VBA code. Here we're going to use formulas. Here's the problem. Um, we can do data validation list. Right? And so if I click in the cell and go Alt D L, that opens up data validation. We can see on the settings it says list and allow that range right there, which is this range right here. Click cancel. And in a separate cell, we could um, have a true false formula, this up here that prevents duplicates. So if I type name one enter, it says forget that. I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to Alt DL to go look. This is settings custom and then a true false formula that gets applied all the way down. So what we would like to do is take uh, these two different separate data validations and put them in one cell. Oh, but guess what? You can't do that with data validation. So we have to come up with a different solution. Over here we did VBA. Here we're going to do formulas. Now I didn't know how to solve this, so I um, did the obvious uh, thing and went to our amazing big Excel family that uh, lives at the discussion board at the MrExcel.com website. You click down here on message board and if you're not a uh, member you can register right there and sure enough down here there's Excel questions that you can post. Right now, you can see that there's 516 people just sitting there of the smartest, most amazing Excel people in the world just sitting there waiting to answer your question. Now, I'm going to go back over to my workbook. I have the, the actual string here. I'm going to click on this link that gets me right to uh, the question that I posted. There's the question. And uh, this guy, Mike uh, Rickson gave us an amazing VBA solution that we saw in trick number 143. But down here, this guy, Peter SSS, gave us an amazing formula solution with complete details. It's just amazing. Now, this one is much more complicated, and the VBA solution is uh, much easier and quicker. But for us formula geeks, boy, this whole solution, which we'll look at here, has some great tricks in it. So let's scroll down here and see if we can't figure out how to do this. We want a drop down and no dupes in this little section right here. Now the first thing we have to do, it's three steps. One is we have to have a list of numbers. Notice we've used name 4 and name 9 here. But we need a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for all the values that are not used. So for instance we want name 1 is going to be 1, 2, 3, but 4 we have to skip because it's over here. So I'm going to get down to 5. This is the 4. This is the 4, and then 5, 6, 7. We're going to skip 9. This will be 8, 9, 10. Right? So we want to somehow have this list. Why do we want these numbers here? Because if we had this list, and it has to be made with a formula that updates. So as we add names here, this, uh, these n this numbering scheme updates. But if we had this, we could use index and mac match, match functions. See, because we could say, find the third value, and it will look over here. But there's nothing here, so it will never find that. Then we can use index and match here to create a new list. So let's see how to create this. And then we do data validation based on this new list. So let's see if we can figure out a formula that will, in this column, create that number sequence. All right, we're going to say equals if and then or function. The reason why we need the or is because we need to say, is this name over here? And here's how we're going to do it. Click on this, equals this whole range right here, and then close parentheses. What's happening here? This is an array right here. It's going to be a return a bunch of trues and falses. Is this here? Right now it's a false, 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 a bunch of falses. So it'd be all falses. What the or does is if it finds any true amongst all these trues and falses, if it finds just one, it'll return true. If they're all false, then this returns false. When it gets down to here, then there'll be one true here, so the or will return a true. Okay? Comma, and that's the this is the logical test. 
and then we need to put here value if true that's what to put in this cell right here if this is true which means there's an actual duplicate we want blank so double quote double quote and then comma value of false we need here some sort of formula that will create those numbers now if you go all the way back to trick number this is 144 if you go all the way back to trick 134 we saw exactly how to do this if we could find the last value in a list and then add one we could always get uh, the number sequence we want. And we're going to use that uh, formula right there. Notice I put a space there before the equal sign so it wasn't a formula just for a moment. All right, so we're going to say look up. Look up what? We're going to have to look up a gigantic number. So we're going to say 9e plus 10. That's a, a shortcut ex, uh, scientific notation way of writing 9 plus 10 zeros. So that's our look up value. Now, where do we want to look up? We want to look up from here, and then I'm going to shift colon, so F12 to F12, and this needs to be expandable range. So as we copy down and we get to here, um, it will be looking at the whole range. When it's down here, it will be looking at all those ranges from above. But the key to um, an expandable range is to lock one of them. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, put the dollar sign in front of the uh, row reference there. That range right now would uh, find 0. But we need a 1 here, so then we simply add 1. When it gets down to here, it's not going to find 2. So it's going to look through this cell and this cell. This has a 0, this has a 1. And then it will add 2, so it will give us our 2 there. Now I just noticed something. This range is looking here. So when we copy the formula down, we need to lock it. So I'm going to put my cursor there in F4, F4. And then I come to the end and close parentheses. That's it. Now, this part of it is an array. And by the way, this is slightly different than the, the solution Peter SSS gave us. He had a different uh, uh, solution here. This is just a little bit shorter. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and hit Enter. Then I'm going to double click and send it down. So we got from 1 to 10 exactly what we want. Now, over here for the new list, we're going to have to create a, a new formula. All right, so we're going to start this with an if equals if, and we're going to use rows, rows, and it actually needs to be from G13, G dollar sign 13, colon G13. We're going to use an expandable range. This is a way of getting uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that is greater than the max of all of these. And I'm going to F4, F4. This part of it just allows us, that's the true false test. So when we get down to the 10th uh, row, we're going to have a blank here and a blank here because we only, we only have 10 values, so the new list only takes up 10 of the first rows. Comma. Now, if the rows are greater, we want a blank here and a blank here, so I'm going to put double quote. And then comma, here's where we do our index and match. Index of what? These right here, F4, F4. Comma, and now we're going to use the match. Match of what? Well, we need to somehow get a way of looking up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, we can use our same rows here. That's a way of generating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's our lookup value. And where's the range we want to look up? Right here. And then F4, F4, comma, 0, close parentheses, and then close parentheses on the end. The, uh, So we forgot a parenthesis right there. So we have it on the rows. And then that's a closed parenthesis on the index. And finally, a closed parenthesis on the if up here. Now this match, what's so nice about it is the, the rows get uh, bigger as we go down. It will automatically, for instance, when it gets uh, to here, it won't be looking there. It'll be looking at, because this is the four cell, one, two, three, four. So then it will look down here. Control, con, control, enter. That just keeps puts the name in the cell and keeps the cell highlighted. And then double click and send it down. Now we can evaluate one of these. Now let's run formula evaluator on this cell and just look. Alt T U F. Alt T U F. Evaluate formula. Notice this is um, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth 
uh, cell as we come down this way, so number 5. But we ne somehow need it to not get this number, but right here. So let's just see how this works. The first part is uh, the, the rows comparing to the max. And that says, is row 5 greater than 10? No. So we don't need to put a blank. It'll skip that blank. Now the index, we're looking at the index. And match, see it's the fifth cell down in this list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But now we need the match to deliver a 6. And it does. And that gives us 1, 2, in this range, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's how we get that name 6 there. 